bandits kill 13 farmers in Niger State. Four dead in Taraba boat accident. Federal government hikes passport fees to 50,000 naira, 100,000 naira. On the foreign scene, WHO launches emergency response as MPOX outbreak resurges in DRC. Hello and welcome to Trust TV's news update. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. Thank you for joining us. Bandits have killed 13 farmers at the Ijua fringes of the Alawa community of Shuru local government area of the state. The local government chairman, Akilu Isiaku, confirmed the killing of the 13 farmers in an interview with the local radio station in Imina on Wednesday. He said the bandits shot dead nine of the victims while four others were killed at a different location the same day. A local source said the bandits targeted the community over allegations that members supply intelligence to security agencies on bandits' movements. Meanwhile, the Niger State Acting Governor, Yakubu Garba, has ascribed the attack as satanic and carless. Garba, in a statement, commiserated with the affected families, community members, and the entire people of Shiro local government area over the unfortunate incident. Over in River State, the governor of Sinelayo Fubara is set to revive the state's neighborhood watch, a community-based security outfit set up by the Immediate Past Administration. Governor Fubara spoke on the consideration of reviving the security outfit when he met with its leaders behind closed doors at Government House in Port Harcourt. Briefing newsmen after the meeting, the head of Command River State Neighborhood Watch, Wogbo Lawrence, expressed satisfaction with the assurances given by the governor after six years of neglect. He explained that despite the lack of remuneration, the security outfit had struggled independently to sustain about 1,150 personnel that it has posted to the 23 local government areas of the state. Despite signing into law the act establishing an agency for the community-based security outfit in March 2018, its full operation suffered setbacks during the last administration as the Opposition or Progressive Congress APC in the state alleged that the security architecture to be used to intimidate its members in the 2019 elections. Going from security matters, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission (EFCC) has released the Sachs Commission Chairman, rather, of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Jalal Arabi, and the Commission Secretary Abdullah Kontogora on bail. Arabi and Contagora were detained over alleged illegal withdrawal and mismanagement of the 90 billion naira 2024 Hajj intervention fund. They were, however, unable to meet their bail conditions and stayed in EFCC's custody for five days. But on Wednesday, a source familiar with the martyr stated Arabi and Contagora had met their bail conditions. The source said they were released on Monday, adding that no further recovery had been made after the first. 314,098 Saudi real. Investigations revealed that from the 90 billion naira heart subsidy, Arabi fraudulently overpaid himself and others the necessary operational costs. Apart from the Hajj Intervention Fund, an investigation into the Commission's activities since 2022 resulted in the recovery of Esther codes paid to staff who did not undertake study tours and payments made to Shurakar's Group Limited for services that were not rendered. Four persons, two women and two children, have been reported dead after their engine boat capsized on the Benue River in Taraba State. Victims were travelling from the Mayoreneo town in Erdo, Kola local government area, to Belengu town in Karim Lamido when the boat capsized. The chairman of the engine boat operators in Taraba State, Jidda, said that while other passengers survived, the four fatalities were confirmed. Flooding has caught off the Azari Road along the Kanumadugri Highway in Bauchi State. Bauchi State Governor Bala Muhammad who inspected the affected area said he has reported the situation to the Minister of Works, Dave Umahi, who had visited last week when the road was initially threatened. Muhammad also warned that communities are at risk of being submerged if the flow of water is not managed effectively. The incident occurred barely two weeks after downpour severely damaged the federal highway connecting Kano to Madubri. 
particularly between the Maluri and Kuskuri villages in the Kachugum local government area of Bauchi state. The flood created a large crater in the middle of the road, forcing motorists to find alternative routes. Bauchi, in the northeast geopolitical zone, has been affected by flooding in the last weeks, with lives lost and thousands of houses destroyed. We go to Jaws, where motorists and commercial drivers in the capital are expressing frustration with the recent surge in fuel prices following the prevailing shortage across the country. Commercial drivers in particular are feeling the pinch as they struggle to maintain the operational cost amidst the rising fuel prices that have hit 900 naira in some stations. Adomusa has on this report. Along the popular Bochi Road, nearly all fuel stations appear deserted, with no fuel being dispensed. Fuel attendants and station workers lamented the situation, which according to them is severely impacting their means of livelihood. This is the station where I work. For more than one month now, we have not sold petrol here because the tankers are still stranded in Wari and Calabar. We just don't know what the problem is. We are not happy with the situation. Motorists and commercial drivers said the hike in price of the fuel is affecting their operations, adding that business is no more profitable like before. The hike in price of the fuel is affecting our business. We used to make little gains from the business, but today the business is not profitable anymore because whatever we realize at the end of the day, we take to the filling station. So the money is going back to the government. Uh, a liter we are buying here in just here, 950 naira. Some place is 960. So, for you to fill your tank to a, a particular level, you know what, you, what what we drain out of your pocket. So it has not been easy. They are telling us they are removing subsidy. We don't know. But the prices of things are still high. The prices of fuel is still high. So subsidy or no subsidy, we don't know anything about that. There's nothing like, if there is subsidy, we, we don't know. But we are, because we are still buying things costly. The fuel is costly. Is it cheap? The motorists and commercial drivers are calling on the government to intervene and find a solution to the crisis, adding that the situation demands urgent attention to mitigate the hardship faced by the masses. From Josh, Ado Musa reporting for Trust TV. Now, the federal government has approved an upward fee review for Nigerian passports effective September 1, 2024. This was disclosed in a statement issued on Wednesday by the spokesman for the Nigerian Immigration Service, Kenneth Udo, on the X handle of the NIS. The increment aims to ensure the quality and integrity of the Nigerian standard passport, according to Udo. Now, according to the statement, based on the review, a 32-page passport booklet with five-year validity, previously charged at 35,000 naira, will now be charged at 50,000 naira, while a 64-page passport booklet with 10-year validity, which was 70,000 naira, will now be 100,000 naira. The NIS said, though it regrets that any inconvenience this increase might cause prospective applicants, it assured Nigerians of unwavering commitment to transparency and quality service delivery at all times. Over in Jigaya State, as part of government's ongoing efforts to digitize its secondary schools for enhanced learning, Governor Umar Namadi has inaugurated a five-day ICT training program for teachers aimed at promoting digital teaching methods across the state. Here's the report. The training, hosted at the NYSC orientation camp in Ditse, is for 4,000 teachers drawn from government secondary schools across Jigawa. This initiative is part of the Jigawa Compete program designed to equip educators with the skills needed for effective digital literacy, e-governance, and to drive the state's digital economy forward. Today's event is a major step forward since the launch of the program. As I mentioned during the initial launch, the Jigawa Compete initiative symbolizes our vision 
for a future where every student in the Gulf State has an appreciable level of equal educational opportunity to master essential skills, achieve proficiency, excel academically, and embrace technology as a formidable tool for sustainable development. So far, I am pleased to note that significant progress has been made in this direction since the initial launch of the program. This progress includes the following. One, the design of a comprehensive educational management information system, IMIS, fully developed with all baseline data on our secondary school, infrastructure facilities, staff and student data, all collected and uploaded into the software. Organized by the Ministry of Higher Education in partnership with the Jigawa ICT and Digital Economy Office, the training seeks to facilitate a seamless shift from traditional teaching methods to a more technology-driven approach. Are you are highly appreciated. You are the kind of support and assistance that you are giving to the Ministry of Higher Education. Uh, from April to today, we have conducted over six training the way that it will enhance the capacity of our staff. I agree with the evidence as a concept. The JOP training is 300 ex-officers across our secondary school. So the plan is every student in the will have a unique number. Unique number that will support us to track their learning as well as their experience as a learner. So this training basically for you to have the knowledge here to so understand the class. And not just in this training, as well as supporting your business, but also to support your education process. The overarching goal is to cultivate a digitally proficient community capable of contributing to the state's economic development. By empowering school teachers through this training, the state aims to ensure that the knowledge gained is passed on to students in line with the government's Catch Them Young policy for digital advancement in Jigawa State. That's by the introduction of new Naira by the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, in October of 2022 to replace the old versions of the 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira nominations Nigerians have been reporting a dearth of the new notes in circulation. The old notes which were meant to continue being legal tender alongside the new notes before they eventually phased out appear to be the main notes in circulation. Trusted views at Damu Imam tells us more. Specifically, the formal sector account for 65% of the country's GDP and 93% of employment. 90% of transactions in the informal economy are mainly in cash. Some of the traders and vendors in Bauchi acknowledge that the new notes have almost disappeared and urge the CBN to initiate policies that will guarantee economic boom. It is better for CBN to reprint more new Nera notes because we are doing transactions regularly. It's only old one in circulation. I can't recall when I saw new notes, but if the government can do well, the better for us. We knew that the new Naira notes printed during last administration is no longer visible to us, especially the small denominations. Even when we go to banks, hardly seen the new ones. Others said did not expect the new notes to last in circulation as a policy, they allege was a deceitful move with a political undertone. One we are using with polymer, they are no longer money that has value in the market because um, they, 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 they don't count in the market. So the Nera note that they are being produced with, uh, I think the skin and the pepper, are the more needed money because of the inflation. All Nera note is really becoming old and it's hard. And, it's, and uh, the new ones can only be found in the hands of the elites. So I begin to, to wonder why was it that uh, they, 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 just, they want to use it to, to differentiate between the poor and the rich or what? Because anytime it's in the hand of the elite that you see the new Nera note. And the poor has the, the old Nera note. Lower denominations, 500, 100, 200, 50 Nera downward. They are all mutilated. 
you hardly see a new lower denomination currency at the now. And then the the bank, when you reach to the bank, if you want to withdraw, the money they normally give to you is the all motivated ones. So thereby government need to need to look through this issue. What is wrong? What has gone wrong in this, particularly when they are trying to become the CBN now? Although the CBN later reversed itself following after a court order saying the old 200 naira, 500 naira, 1000 naira notes remain legal tender alongside the new notes, only the old notes seem to be in circulation. Begin the question why? Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. Nigeria ranks amongst the top 10 countries with the highest contributions to plastic pollution globally. This is according to the Global Plastic Action Partnership of the World Economic Forum. The country generates 2.5 million tons of plastic waste annually, with 8% of it generated in the country not being recycled. To change the narrative, some Nigerians are now investing in plastic recycling as Trust TV's Ibrahim Ismail who visited a plastic recycling plant in Abuja reports. According to scientists, plastics are synthetic polymers derived from the byproduct of petroleum. Some of its substances cannot be digested or decomposed by any microorganism, and hence plastics are non-biodegradable. Chariot Energy, a US-based renewable energy company, said plastics can take anywhere from 20 to 500 years to decompose, depending on the material and structure. That means plastic can only be managed, and the most effective way to do so is through recycling. On the other hand, this material is needed by manufacturing companies for production. So I wanted to be the person to start to the conversation around bridging the gap between let's not throw this plastic on the floor, let's not throw this recyclable waste on the floor, we can actually convert it into money. So people who need money, they can actually collect and sell and have some income into their pocket. But at the same time, manufacturing companies that need this material can have material for their production um, cycle. So that was why I started Change Dirty um, almost 10 years ago. To number one, raise awareness and sensitization to people that this is actually money that people are throwing away. But at the same time, that you know these things are also harmful to the environment they're harmful to people and so we need to ensure that we are better stewards of the earth collected from recycling agents from different parts of nigeria this is the procedure through which these plastic waste are processed before being taken to a superior industrial companies within and outside the shores of nigeria for transformation into brand new products like plastic chairs spot jaces among others. The global plastic recycling market was valued at over 51 billion US dollars in 2023 and there is projection of an increase. Nigerians are benefiting from this huge amount of money domicile in the recycling industry in the plastic world. But then they are operating amid economic challenges that is pushing them to the brink. We are looking forward to a level where we are going to replace our diesel power generators with uh, gas power generators so that we'll be able to reduce uh, the carbon emission and at the same time so to, to reduce the cost of uh, uh, buying diesel. And some operations they will depend a lot of diesel and then from and the power from the national grid. In addition to carbon plastic pollution, this recycling plant provides job opportunities to at least 95 people on site and remotely. Well, uh, we in Chelidete in Giri, we used to produce pet in Berlin. We used to do crushing. This is the bag that we see here. This is the Berlin that we are seeing outside. This is what we are doing here. Plastic recycling plants like this one always struggle to operate at optimal level due to shortage of resources to acquire more than machinery that will help create goods for domestic consumers and also discourage importation. But amidst the harsh economic conditions in the country, the priority is to stop the business from sinking. Ibrahim Ismail, Trust TV News, Abuja. Away from Nigeria, the World Health Organization says it is working to ensure 
a proper response to curb the spread of the mpox virus. This follows the resurgence of the virus, also known as monkeypox, which is now a concern for many countries, with several cases reported across multiple regions. The Democratic Republic of Congo has been the epicenter of this new resurgence. So far, at least 18,000 cases have been reported in the DRC, with at least 500 deaths attributed to the virus. Over 70% of the cases have been reported among children. The incident manager for MPOX at the WHO Regional Office for Africa, Dr. Samuel Boland, said they are adapting new strategies to reach even the conflicted regions in the DRC as part of their response to the resurgence. The DRC hopes to receive vaccine doses to address its MPOX outbreak by next week, according to the Congolese Health Minister on Monday. The WHO stressed that the vaccines are urgently needed. Now, Kenyan police on Thursday offered a cash reward for information leading to the arrest of a suspected serial killer who escaped from a Nairobi police cell. Police launched a manhunt on Tuesday after Collins Jumaisi, who was accused of murdering and dismembering dozens of women, broke out of a police station in an upmarket area of the Kenyan capital along with 12 Eritreans. Five officers who appeared in court on Wednesday on suspicion of aiding Jumaisi's escape have been freed on a 200,000 Kenyan shilling bond despite prosecutors seeking an order to keep them in custody for 14 days. 33-year-old Jumaisi, described by police as a vampire psychopath, was arrested last month after the gruesome discovery of a number of mutilated female bodies in a rubbish dump in Mukuru slum area in the Kenyan capital Nairobi. Police say he has confessed to murdering 42 women over a two-year period from 2022, with his wife being his first victim. But the suspect has claimed he was tortured after his arrest. Officers said Jamesi and the other men escaped by caught through a wire mesh roof where he was being held before scaling a perimeter wall. And in sports, Nigeria's under-20 girls Falconets have now fully recovered from their long trip to Colombia, now set to confront their counterparts from Australia. The first of two friendly marches organized by the Nigerian Football Federation to ensure team readiness for the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup taking place in that country 31st August to 22nd September. The clash with the girls from down under has been scheduled for 10 a.m. Colombia time, which is 4 p.m. Nigeria time, on Friday at the Club Banco de la Republica in Bogota. NFF's FIFA March agent Jairo Pochon has assured the NFF that all arrangements have been concluded for the encounter. Dan Juma's score from the qualifiers is now boosted by the presence of a number of players who have seen action with the Nigeria senior team, Super Falcons, including defenders Jumoke Alani, Rufayat Imuron, Comfort Florence Show, and forward Okpayemi Ajekai, Chiamaka Ukuchuku, and Flourish Sebastian. The Falconers will tackle Mexico in another friendly match at the same venue on Monday. That's it for news updates at this time. For more of our news, programs, and documentaries, follow us on our social media platforms and our YouTube live stream. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. Thank you for joining us at this time.